Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for standing by. Welcome to Mamma Mini's Mamma Mini's third quarter fiscal 20, 2022 earnings conference call. During today's presentation, all parties will be in a listen-only mode. Following the presentation, the conference will be open for questions. If you have a question, please press star followed by the one on your touchtone phone. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press star followed by the two. If you're using a speaker equipment, please lift the handset before making your selections. This conference is being recorded today, December 14th, 2021. And the earnings press release accompanying this conference call was issued at the close of the market today. On our call today is Mama Mancini's Chairman and C CEO, Carl Wolf, President and COO, Matthew Brown, CFO, Larry Morgenstein, and Greg Flesnick, CEO of MZ North America, Mama Mancini's investor relations firm. I would now like to turn the conference over to Greg to read a disclaimer about the following statements. Thank you, operator. Before we get started, I'll read a disclaimer about forward-looking statements. This conference call may contain, in addition to historical information, forward-looking statements within the meaning of the federal securities laws regarding Mama Mancini. Forward-looking statements include, but are not limited to, statements that express the company's intentions, beliefs, expectations, strategies, predictions, or any other statements relating to its future earnings, activities, events, or conditions. These statements are based on current expectations, estimates, and projections about the company's business based, in part, on assumptions made by management. These statements are not guarantees of future performance and involve risks, uncertainties, and assumptions that are difficult to predict. Therefore, actual outcomes and results may and are likely to differ materially from what is expressed or forecasted in the forward-looking statements due to numerous factors discussed from time to time in this report and in other documents which the company files with the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission. In addition, such statements could be affected by risks and uncertainties related by, to factors beyond the company's control. Matters that may cause actual results to differ materially from those in the forward-looking statements include, among other factors, the loss of key management personnel, availability of capital, and any major litigation regarding the company. In addition, this conference call contains time-sensitive information that reflects management's best analysis only as of the date and time of this conference call. The company does not take any uh, under, under any obligation to publicly update or revise any forward-looking statements to reflect future events information or circumstances that arise after the date of this conference call. At this time, I'd like to turn the call over to Carl Wolf, the company's chairman and chief executive officer. Carl, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you, Greg, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today. I'd like to welcome you to our third quarter fiscal 2022 financial results conference. Call. Third uh, the third quarter of fiscal 2022 was marked by our highly focused acquisition effort. We have notably advanced a significant internal effort to explore potential acquisition. Our focus is on companies with complementary products in the perimeter of the supermarket, as well as exceptional operational and financial metrics. I try this. It seems like there's a little bit of um, static on the line. The ability to realize new distribution relationships and push an existing product through our already robust distribution network and attract evaluation is our chief goal. We hope to announce our first major acquisition in the near term as we move through our due diligence process. If completed, this would dramatically increase our sales and EBITDA. We anticipate financing the acquisition with our cash on hand and bank financing with the goal of minimizing any dilution. As a reminder, I myself am the largest shareholder of MMMB. More to come on this front. Given our growth expectations and the revenue from our near-term acquisition targets, we believe Mama Mancini's has the potential to approach $100 million in annual sales within 18 months, establishing us as a, tr as a truly national platform company. With cont we continue to innovate our core product line as well, as we will soon begin to ship a major new line of ready-to-eat meals in up to 11 varieties. Due to the immediate labor shortages facing retailers, we believe that this line will have great success. Our new uh, convenience meatballs in a cup 
product will launch for testing in the first quarter at an attractive $399 price point. The high protein content of 16 grams and very modest calories are attractive are attractive attributes to health conscious consumers. This product has the potential to efficiently service the exciting convenience store, supermarket, and university food service opportunities. We have added to production capacity to handle 10 to 12 million in incremental annualized sales. In addition, we are about ready to begin first supply to Amazon Fresh, representing our first direct-to-consumer online sales. We, we believe this will be a large opportunity for, for our Beyond or Mama Mancini's plant-based meatballs. This will start as a smaller account, though could be significant over time. This is based upon cooperative market, a cooperative marketing program with Amazon Fresh and historical comp- comparables uh, from other companies. Our growing sales are a result of our high quality and innovative new products and our effective multi-pronged marketing efforts. These have historically included radio campaigns, social media efforts, and continued work with QVC. I'd like to touch on a few of these now. On the social media side of things, we continue to maintain a robust reach, engaging new customers and encouraging repeat purchases. To date, we have over 500,000 likes and continue to geo-target likely consumers who who live within five miles of of specific retail locations. <clears throat> Our QVC efforts have seen record success as well, with Dan Mancini's live pitches driving impressive sales on their platform. As many of, uh, as many of you are aware, we were winners for three QVC Consumer Choice Awards, Best Meatball, Best Sauce, and Most Trusted Brand. Perhaps most notably, a Mama Mancini's product was named the coveted today's special value deal on QVC for December 8th, securing approximately five hours of airtime throughout the day. This um, will drive expected sales of $2 million spread throughout fiscal 2022 and 23, inclusive of auto delivery customers. QVC is North America's largest direct-to-consumer marketer and is available in over 100 million homes throughout the U.S., in summary, in summary, we believe the foundation building this quarter will lay the road for a successful 2022. We believe that we maintain significant potential to begin shipping several exciting new product placements to Tier 1 retailers in the near term, near term and we and believe we are poised for a return to margin expansion by year end as several margin improvement initiatives come into play. I would expect sales to grow to 11.5 to 12 million in the fourth quarter, up from 9.4 million in the year ago period, uh, and up from 10.9 million this quarter. We are particularly excited by the growth opportunities facing uh, the potential acquisitions we are evaluating today in calendar year 2022, made possible by leveraging our national network of tier one retailers and club store accounts. And I'd now like to turn the call over to Larry Morgenstein, our Chief Financial Officer, to walk through some key financial details from the third quarter. Thank you, Carl. Revenue for the third quarter of fiscal 2022 increased 12.1% to $10.9 million as compared to $9.7 million in the same year ago quarter. The increase in revenue for the third quarter was a result of major new business with Whole Foods and Publix. Grossed profit totaled $2.7 million, or 25.2% of total revenues in the third quarter of fiscal 2022, as compared to $2.9 million, or 30.1% of total revenues in the same year-ago quarter. The lower gross profit margin in the third quarter was due to higher cost of protein, cost of freight, and all elements of supply. The company expects gross margin will improve by fiscal year-end as commodity prices normalize and higher production volumes will result in higher plant operating efficiencies and significant price increases come into effect. Operating expenses totaled $2.7 million in the third quarter of fiscal 2022 as compared to $2.1 million in the same year-ago quarter. 
as a percentage of sales, operating expenses totaled 25.1% in the third quarter of fiscal 2022 as compared to 21.9% in the same year-ago quarter. Operating expenses in the third quarter were affected by over 300000 in increased logistic expenses, higher marketing expenses of approximately 100000 which were introductory demonstration expenses for a new rotational retail item at a major national retailer, as well as over 150000 in increased corporate infrastructure expenses in the third quarter, including higher director fees, costs related to the company's NASDAQ listing, increases in corporate management to handle new acquisitions, new management systems, and recruiting costs. Pre-tax income for the third quarter of fiscal 2022 totaled zero as compared to 0.7 million in the same year ago quarter. Net loss for the third quarter of fiscal 2022 totaled zero or zero cents per diluted share as compared to a net income of 0.7 million or two cents per diluted share in the same year ago quarter. Cash and cash equivalents as of October 31st, 2021 were 4.5 million as compared to 1.8 million in the same year ago quarter and 3.2 million as of January 31, 2021. The increased cash balance balances benefited from 2.7 million in increased cash flow from operations uh, from uh, year, the year ago quarter and 1.3 million from the beginning of last fiscal year. We do not anticipate raising any additional equity capital at this time and are confident the cash on hand combined with our cash generated from operations each quarter will be sufficient to sustain our core operations as we grow. This completes my comment and now I'd like to turn the call over to Matt Brown, our President and Chief Operating Officer. Matt? Thanks, Larry. Plant operations worked well through a challenging period of inflationary commodity prices, both in raw materials and packaging, as well as skyrocketing freight costs and some signs of sustained supply chain interruptions. We successfully planned for and managed longer packaging supply lead times without customer interruption and expanded our network of both material supplies and logistic companies to provide greater price competition and greater reliability, which are now showing benefits. Q3 2022 will be long remembered as the period where operations made aggressive preparations for its bright future. I will highlight several examples. In order to accelerate continuous improvement in setting and achieving performance metrics, we have hired a new director of operations with great experience in organizing and structuring workforces to achieve efficiencies in food processing environments. We felt adding a fresh challenging viewpoint to our management team would be helpful as we structure for the next level. Our Director of Operations, Jorge Blanco, is already making a positive impact. Consistent with our policy of replacing fully depreciated inefficient core machinery, we replaced one of the three multivac machines, adding both capacity and reliability to our ready-to-eat, or RTE, room, which wraps all of our food products. In preparation for the imminent launch of our new and exciting Meals for One, product line, we completed plans and began construction of our new assembly room specifically designed for efficient processes to support new business volume. This new room was achieved by relocating our staff room to plant space previously used by our professional staff. The new product will begin rolling off the lines this month. We also have been very busy finalizing preparations for our new meatball in a cup snack product line which we are presenting to convenience store chains and C stores now. We are very excited about this product design, which includes six half-ounce meatballs and sauce in a microwavable cup. We plan to sell this in cases of 12 and widely distribute frozen across the nation. Finally, throughout Q3, we completed preparations for going live on Oracle's NetSuite system a new enterprise resource planning or otherwise known as an ERP system replacing our financial management, procurement, manufacturing, and inventory management functions. As a footnote, we are now live on the system, and while expectedly making some operational adjustments, we are seeing the benefits of this new integrated capability that it's bringing to the company. Finally, as Carl mentioned, we continue to look towards vertical integration through the acquisition of companies 
that not only align with our core competencies, but also align with our plant capabilities. We believe we have taken the steps necessary to prepare our management team for opportunities to gain leverages in cross-company product expansion and management of potential efficiencies. At this point, I will turn the call back over to Carl for some final notes before wrapping the call up for Q&A. Carl? Thank you, Larry and Matt. As I noted in my opening remarks, the business continues to fire on all cylinders with our acquisition efforts progressing notably. We have laid the foundation for an incredibly strong growth tra trajectory in fiscal 2023. I firmly believe we are still in the early innings of Mama Mancini's growth tra trajectory and increasing prominence as a public company. We will continue to scale operations and drive forward our acquisition efforts. We are poised for continued success on all fronts and look forward to seeing what the future holds for our building brand. With that, I'll turn it over to the operator to begin our Q&A session. Operator? Thank you, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. As a reminder, if you have a question, please press the star followed by the one on your touchtone phone. If you would like to withdraw your question, please press the star followed by the two. And if you are using speaker equipment, you will need to lift the handset before making your selection. Our first question will come from Howard Halpern from Taglis Brothers. Please go ahead. Uh, first, first question relates to, uh, I guess, the gross margin uh, that you anticipate improving uh, over yes. time. Uh, what, you know, what, what do you think the lag time is between? Uh, you know the pre the price increases and, the, and them accepting it, and the leverage that you're creating also within uh, within the plant. So if you could add some color to that over the next few quarters. I think uh, this quarter is partial, and the next quarter should be pretty close to complete. Um, what happened this year is that uh, in prior periods, where there was a spike in protein uh, prices, uh, they backed down as consumer had resistance, et cetera. Well, this year there wasn't any back down. Uh, if any of you read the Tyson report, um, their um, protein prices were up about 35% on average, and their sales were down around 15%, and their profits doubled. So um, anyway, uh, the resistance didn't develop uh, among consumers, and uh, so the price increases uh, stuck and actually went higher. So uh, chains were reluctant to accept price increases based upon prior years, and the projection was it's uh, transitory. I think someone has heard that word before. Um, and uh, so anyway, that is not the case, and chains have pretty much uh, thrown in the towel and accepted uh, price increases readily. So, um, so we are getting the prices through most of them will occur uh, January 1 through uh, mid to late January. Um, okay. Also, um, there uh, was, um, we are really spending a lot of time on freight. Freight was $300,000 higher on the way out, but about $100,000 on, on the way in. So we are okay. spending a lot of time on managing that. Uh, so it, it affected us both ways. Okay. Uh, and in terms of, you know, of your acquisition pipeline, uh, if, if you could just add a little bit more color, but in particular, are you looking at acquisitions that are geographically close to where you currently are and acquisitions that will enable you to take your uh, ready-to-eat uh, uh, product offerings you know, to uh, uh, the next level? Um, all that. Uh, we're looking for acquisitions that um, at first are geographically close because we find the biggest opportunities in private companies uh, that uh, have uh, proven their worth uh, but are not uh, distributed nationally. So that gives us the opportunity uh, to uh, distribute them 
plus OA being local, it allows us to uh, manage them. Uh, we like uh, products in the same uh, uh, perimeter of the store area, which is growing very rapidly. And uh, uh, so anyway, I think we have great great opportunities there, very high volume opportunities. Okay. And it, and the, the, the acquisition candidates will have extra – allow you to create extra capacity for your current uh, plans for your, uh, your uh, you know uh, – your new product offerings? Uh, yes, um, they should. Okay. Uh, and one, uh, uh, one the bigger uh, the bigger opportunity the bigger opportunity in the short run is to expand their existing products into our distribution. Okay. Uh, and, and and just sort of an update question. Uh, you know, throughout the year, you talked about. Uh, you know, uh, initial product placements with customers, you know, new customers or expanding within customers. Have most of those placements taken place or could we expect uh, some more initial uh, uh, throughput through your uh, system? Um, well, we had one major rotation with a national club store chain this summer, uh, and that was also part of our uh, – problem in March through October and that was part of the problem because we were on a fixed price uh, and okay. uh, that hurt and couldn't raise the price and also had a high introductory uh, uh, marketing expense. However, the product did extraordinarily well and now that it's out of rotation, we're getting tons of uh, consumer requests for where can we find it. So, And it's a branded product. So uh, we're very optimistic. So we so we pay you know we pay the price and the cost for developing a, a new major customer uh, in the mega millions range on a yearly basis. So that occurs. Uh, the other customers uh, have been successful in the placement and we've made more. This is the time of year you don't get new placements; you get them in uh, the beginning of the year. However, in the um, um, ready to eat meals for one. We do have a major placement. The first orders are going out this quarter uh, okay. in a major customer. And we think there will be many. From first, indications are very, very strong that right. this will be a major, major line for us. Okay. And, and just one final question. Are you are you having any trouble finding employees uh, to uh, to come to join the Mama Mancini's team? No. We're okay on labor. Um, okay. uh, we're, we're okay. We okay. have a good work environment, and we have a lot of uh, minority uh, workers who are mainly Hispanic who are very hardworking in, in that community. We have a very good reputation. Okay. Well, guys, keep up the great work. Thank you. Again, if you have a question, please press star than one. Our next question will come from Bill Lapp. Please go ahead. Hey, Bill. Oh, Bill Lapp. Okay, you recognize me. Hi, hi, Carl. Sure, sure do. Yeah. Uh, Carl, a little disappointed you're moving so slowly on this acquisition. I mean, you got paralysis analysis, it seems to me. Uh, how long is it going to take? I thought you had one candidate you were pretty sold on, and you were just completing your due diligence. Uh, how far along are you on that candidate? We're very far along. Uh, until, so uh, until we uh, sign the contract, which is we think very imminent, uh, we we cannot announce it. But okay, if anything so, happen at the last. Okay, when you but when I you say a contract, short. when you say a contract, not a letter of intent, a definitive a purchase agreement, right? Yes. Okay. So you're waiting till that definitive purchase agreement is before you announce it, right? There's a lot to there's a lot to do in the final stages of an acquisition. Uh, yeah, I know. In terms of completing all the um, uh, compliance and um, uh, changeover details, et cetera. So basically, you you you've reached an agreement. You're papering it, and when that's all done, it should be coming forth shortly. Is that correct? 
we re, we we have not signed an agreement. We, we no, uh, but I mean, is there any open issues that could not, cause the? Not sure. okay. We don't. We don't think so. However, again, anything can happen at the last minute. And okay, but always, so the, uh, there's always things that come up that have to be resolved. Okay. So would you say, based on your knowledge now, it's 30 days, 60 days? What would you say, if you know, tomorrow. subject to those get tomorrow? Okay. Well, you may need it. The stock's a dollar fifty-six, dollar sixty-three. Um, a good time to buy. Yeah. Don't you know? That. Now yeah. the the other the other thing I was trying to understand is what uh, did you forecast a hundred million dollar run rate, or what did you open up your remarks? Was it how much? I know you did twice. With with, with the growth rate of a um, major acquisition or potentially others, and our own growth rate, we could we envision ourselves uh, potentially being a hundred million dollar company within eighteen months. With eighteen months, I know. Great. And can you give us any feeling about this acquisition? How much sales that would add, assuming you make it? I mean, you may not make it, but. Would it be a twenty million dollar uh, revenue? It's, uh, it's, it's very, very significant sales. Huh? It would be Pardon? very significant sales. Okay. It would be and it, very significant. Sales. Okay. I and can't really say much more about it. No, I understand. I'm not trying to pressure. I'm just trying to. You know, you've been going along with these things so long. You know, it it just takes you know a lot of this time. I appreciate un- that. This is this is not unusual. And um, it's, no, I understand. Uh, and you want to do and, it right. You don't want to get it wrong. And you, when you deal with a private company, you have to do um, more intensive due diligence and uh, uh, work. Right. Now, I respect that. It's just, it's, just, it's just the nature of it. Yeah. No, I understand because an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Okay. So is this quarter, do you, I, I don't know if you've said that, but do you forecast making a profit in the fourth quarter or didn't you make a, a projection? I think we that? will. I think we will, but um, it's still very early in the quarter. Oh, that's right, because your quarter will end in when? Uh, January 30th. Okay, so you got another You got another 45 days. Okay. Uh, now, you were, check, you, you were talking with Howard about, this and you mentioned that you in in October you couldn't raise the prices but you did a lot of work and you got those customers that are calling you and wanting the product. Did you retain the client? Did you retain that yes. store? Okay, so yes. so they've cre- they've created more of a demand, so the store needs you because they're getting a lot of calls for the product. Is that correct? Uh, well, that's part of it. The other part of it is that the some clients resisted the price increases based upon last year. Last year, prices spiked very heavily because of supply problems of uh, factories and COVID. And yeah. uh, they went up uh, very high, but then they backed off very, very quickly. So a lot of the chains felt that the same thing would happen again, that there would be a lot of resistance. So it didn't happen. And right now, everyone is assuming that it's not as um, our government says transitory. Okay, now I'm just a, this new product with the meatball six in a in a cup. How much are you going to sell yeah. that for? Do you have a how much is that going to be sold for? Uh, generally speaking, it's fifty percent of the retail. Okay, and uh, okay, and do you have an existing order for that now? No, we're going. We uh, we, uh, we will have packaging in the house uh, in the next week, and then we will uh, because uh, we had prototypes, and we didn't want to. And there were uh, we had a lot of uh, uh, issues dealing with ha- that in microwave properly, so we didn't want to uh, book anything until we knew uh, that that it worked very well, and we believe it does. The volume on that we at this point. It's unproven, but there is a very big uh, marketplace for protein. There's two two markets in uh, uh, convenience stores. Uh, one for snacks and you know regular soda and so forth. But there's a very big market for you know kind bars and uh, alternative drinks and protein, right. beef jerky, and so we're appealing to that market. Uh, 
which really makes it a universal product. The beauty of our product is that um, it can go out on a hot case, and, um, uh, which has very high volume, and it tastes excellent. It's very easy to use. It's high in protein. It's 290 calories for uh, a seven ounce serving, which is very modest. And um, it has antioxidants. So, uh, any, and so uh, we think it, there was a lot of interest in it. How well it will actually do in the marketplace, we do not know yet. But if successful, it, it could be uh, millions and millions of dollars of business. But how are you going to pull it through? Are you going to be advertising a lot? How are you going to get no, it, on, the awareness? On a convenience store item, a convenience store like, uh, item like this, it's totally impulse. Mm-hmm. But we do so already should... have quite quite a recognition, but it's, it's an impulse item. Okay, so what I'm not saying, so the people that come in to buy that, do they microwave it there or do they take it home and microwave it? They have a choice. We have two different types of customers. They're going to microwave it in the store, put it out on a hot counter, ready to grab and go, like um, breakfast uh, uh, or sandwiches, a burger. Uh huh. So, so now you're going to get an alternative to a burger for a high. So that's uh, very, if that if it succeeds there, the volume is. Uh, through the roof. Uh, the other thing is that it's behind the counter and you water it and they uh, microwave it for a couple minutes and they have a product uh, ready to go. And the third one is you take it home or you microwave it in the store. Mm-hmm. Take it home and microwave and, it or in the store. Microwave have you had take it. Have you had any test runs, any beta sites of it all with the product? No, no, no. Okay, because we only know about we only know uh, we don't know yet. So we'll okay, so in other words, uh, this is uh, we're to, with all the beta sites. We are uh, limiting uh, our whole team based on the interest. We'd like to go out to uh, several uh, prospects who have interest, and we're limiting it because uh, in case we have to tweak it or have issues. Right, you got to test it first. Market, right, and, uh, the whole marketplace. We do know the packaging is uh, very attractive. We're very happy with that. We'll probably be posting that um, on a press release soon once we have so, the actual product. So do you think you'll – when do you think this will occur? When do you think you'll have it at the site to test or whatever you're going to do when the packaging Hopefully in the, the next in the month of January. Month of January. Okay. All right. Uh, well, good luck. And keep up the hard work, and I hope you're feeling okay. All right? Man, thank joke. you. All right. Yeah, thank you. This concludes our question and answer session. I would like to turn the conference back over to Carl Wolf for any closing remarks. I want to thank everyone uh, for participating in this uh, conference call. And um, we want to let you know that once uh, COVID restrictions um, as uh, a decline, we will actively participating in investor uh, shows and conferences. Uh, we look forward to continuing uh, updates and, on our progress. Thank you. The conference is now concluded. Thank you for attending today's presentation. You may now disconnect. <laughs>